You got it. I am fabulous. Excited to be here today. I love it. It is just getting dark. It is eight o'clock in the evening here in Canada on the east coast of Canada on Prince Edward Island, famous for beautiful beaches in the summer. Mm -hmm. It's it is, but it is very small. <laughs> Uh, close to seven years. It's a very rural place, like very country. I live on a big farm, so not a lot of raw vegans here, sadly. <laughs> yes, it's kind of in that springtime in between the snows just receding. Mm hmm Yes. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> A heap. Sure. Well, when I first went raw vegan in August of 2009, I started just my own little blog. I'd always had different websites since 2001, back before they were even called blogs. And so I started it in 2009, but it was just a side little thing I would just use to keep my good recipes as a little recipe box for myself. And of course, over time it grew and people kind of gravitated towards it because they liked how I, I'm not into being fancy and I'm not into being complicated. So um, yeah, so it started in 2009. It's changed a lot over the years but it's my main thing that I do just like you you know it's a big part of my life and I, I love I love it well as you mentioned I have a lot of different things like videos podcasts but definitely the most popular thing is certainly the recipes people really gravitate towards them and that is definitely the main draw for sure mm-hmm Definitely desserts. For sure, my most popular recipe is my raw brownie recipe, which is very simple. I know you have a food processor, so it's just like a dump and process uh, recipe. But for sure, it's my most popular recipes are sort of those transitional recipes that can appeal to anybody. You don't have to be raw or even vegan or vegetarian. So the brownies are popular. And then I have a lot of cheesecakes. Sweets are my uh, downfalls, and also they're definitely my, my most popular stuff too. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly most of the people that visit my website are raw vegan. As as I know, you know, you know, that's predominantly like people who don't cook anything and we use fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds and usually food processor or blender. And that's that's really the main thing. All of my recipes are basically considered raw vegan. I do use honey, so we could go on the side tangent of whether or not that is vegan. But essentially, that is all of my recipes are raw vegan. <laughs> I like it. I've never heard that. Mm -hmm. Well, for the first few years that I was raw, I didn't eat honey. I was using a lot of agave nectar. And, and you know, that kind of became controversially agave nectar, how processed it was and the, um, you know, but how it would spike your glucose levels and, and things like that. Um, but, and for me, because I do live in a farm community, I know where my honey come from. And I have a bartering system with my honey guy. And for me, it just, as I've gone through my own vegan journey, I know that it's been, I was very militant at the beginning about what I would eat or wouldn't eat. And I'm still very much that way. It's just my personality. Really. I do well with rules, black or white, but for me, honey it just made sense to me and I preferred getting something that came down the road than from I don't even know thousands of, of miles away for, for that but that's my vegan story it, 
it started in 2009. I really came at it from not necessarily from an animal rights point of view at all. Um, mostly for me, I wanted to give myself a challenge. I was a junk food vegetarian, and I really wanted to enjoy fruits, vegetables, and healthy food. But I didn't. I didn't know how. I for me, I wanted just to eat chips and pop and candy, and that, those are vegetarian. So I was a great vegetarian. <laughs> but so I, I really in 2009 I went on a 30 day raw challenge, just quite randomly, and I stuck to it for 30 days. And on day 31, I was fully planning on going back to my usual chips, pop, candy. You know, so like day 31, I was like, woohoo, gonna just like gorge but I I didn't and I when I just took a moment in that morning and I reflected on what I wanted to eat how I was feeling I just wanted to keep going and I've kept going since then definitely for me the first couple of weeks were difficult you know, you don't know what to make and uh you know your everything you're used to is different there's that learning curve but once I got past those first couple of weeks I started to feel a lot better and by the end of the 30 days things that used to taste very like even a simple apple it used to taste really tart but by the end of it I was like this apple is actually kind of sweet and so for me one of the things that has kept me going is I really value how my palate has changed that I really think like a carrot is delicious. I mean, not that I just sit around and eat carrots. I know we both enjoy making fun vegan recipes, but for me that I really value and I don't want to reset my palate by eating a big bag of chips or something like that. Mhm. Mm Definitely. I mean, I think you do have to persevere through those first, for me, it was a couple of weeks where I, it was kind of awkward and I still was really craving those old foods, but there is a benefit if you can push through. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's so true and I and I've also heard sort of the flip side of that is we all we all want to be the best and be perfect and I think that some people do get overwhelmed with the idea of even a 30-day challenge like some people feel like they can only do a seven day or something. But I think even in my case, like it was supposed to be 30 days and then it kept going and going. But I agree that it's so much easier. I know you've been in way longer than me and you just get in the groove. It becomes your normal. It's not as complicated as people think. Mhm. Mm Definitely the food processor. I always had a blender. I didn't have a good blender, but I grew up with the blender in the house that was normal. But when I was growing up, we didn't have a food processor, and so when I went raw, Actually, for I think my first 30 days, all I had was a blender and I was trying to blend, you know, make things. <laughs> yeah, I was one of those. But I think that's normal. You know, you make do with what you have. But for me now, I use my food processor 
almost more than my blender, I would say. I just use it all the time. And I'm always talking even to regular people who are standard American diet people. I'm always like, do you have a food processor? Because they're not that expensive. And they really open up so many different opportunities. Well, I often get the question, as I know you do, I'm sure too, is what's the difference between a blender and a food processor and do I really need both? And I like to explain it in my quick and dirty way as that just a blender is for really liquid stuff, like a smoothie or soups, and a food processor is for the heartier stuff like a brownie or stuff that's a little bit drier. So I think the reason to get a food processor and I make it really easy, is like you could make brownies and pie crusts and a lot of delicious sweets in the food processor. And I do always say as well that with a blender, I do recommend getting a very expensive blender, but with a food processor, I think you don't need to drop a lot of money on one, so you can just get one for, I don't know what the conversion is, but say 50 American dollars, and that'll do you quite well. I don't think the brand is particularly important for me. I do think for a blender, I have a Vitamix, but I believe that a Blendtec and a Vitamix are very similar. Um, so I think the brand isn't much important, but you do want to get a commercial grade blender. And then with the food pro food processor, I don't even really advocate a brand. I've had a few different ones. Um, and I kind of advocate on that is to just go with a generally cheap one, but try to get one that's at least seven or eight cups because the size matters for a food processor. But what, where do you stand on the brand debate of, like, of your appliances? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what I have heard about Australia is that they're like even just even more ridiculously expensive there, like something like $800 or something. That's crazy. I do think it's a really good point that you brought up, though, that it is, I think, important to start where you're at with whatever you have. So if you've got a cheapo blender, that's great. And if you don't have anything for raw, it's a little bit harder than just vegan, I think, without any appliance. But um, definitely, I think it's just a case of... And also, too, I recommend if you have anything, instead of trying to modify a recipe that uses a food processor or something, just look for recipes that already are okay with whatever equipment you have because modifying stuff, especially when you're new, is 
usually doesn't turn out too well. I do have a definite sweet tooth, so I love to make, I used to make a lot of cashew-based cakes, freezer cakes, which I still do sometimes, but I do find the longer I've been eating raw, I do enjoy just a little bit more simple eating, but, and I do enjoy making soups in my blender, which even for me, it took me a couple of years to even open up my brain to the idea of a soup in the blender. It's it sounds a little freaky, but actually I, <laughs> yeah, but I find like uh, I have a good celery soup that's just kind of like cashews and celery and you blend it up and I'm into soups and, you know, salads. And for me, I do have a dehydrator because a lot of raw vegans will make crackers and pizza crust and dehydrate them, but it's not something I do every day. It is time consuming. So a couple of times a month or even just once a month, I'll make a whole bunch of crackers and that kind of thing um yeah but i'm pretty simple i just love i'm not a one of the like low fat raw vegans who eats a ton of fruit for all my meals but there's nothing better for me than like a beautiful fruit plate of grapes and strawberries and blueberries and you know i love fruit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one of the things that works well for me is repetition so even if you're new and maybe wanting to eat a high raw diet and um, change the way you're you're eating I find that if you can make the same thing for breakfast like say green smoothie if you're just making a green smoothie don't try to make a different smoothie every morning, like just make the same one and then you're going to get into the groove of it. And then once you get sick of it, then you can move on to another one. And also just a, a practical tip as well. As a raw vegan, I really enjoy having a nut spread, something hearty that you can spread on top of even sliced cucumbers to make it like a very quick meal. So I find having some kind of nice salad dressing or not pate in the fridge when you come home really helps a lot because you don't always have time to like spend an hour sometimes you're starving and you have to go out and you need to have a backup plan definitely I definitely advocate instead of focusing on no, like, no, I'm not allowed to have the things I used to like. No, that's not okay to focus on yes. And to think, well, I don't like broccoli or celery, so I'm not going to try to eat those, but I love fresh cherries. So sometimes it's just as simple as eating more of the things you already like. And it can be also about adjusting your budget because we do know that fresh fruit and veg tends to cost more than just dried pasta and sauce. So it can be sometimes just allowing yourself at the grocery store to buy more of the good things that you do like. Mm Yes, is the short answer. And I find, but for me, one of the things that I do to help keep it down is I'm very mindful of my budget. And I do know that there's certain things in my area that allow me that are just cheaper. So like bananas are very inexpensive. I always have bananas and apples and oranges in huge supply, but I don't always have, you know, fresh cherries. Like that is just not sustainable. And there's those basic ideas like eat in season and all those kinds of things. Sorry, go ahead. 
You want some? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Do you have any? Me neither. <laughs> I understand. Yes. I do. Do you get LC? How do you feel about it? I went through a phase where I thought, Laura Jane is just too complicated. I'm just going to be Laura and let's just try that. And it felt so weird. It was just not me. And I just want to have a simple name. But when you're raised, you know, Lee Chantel or Laura Jane, it's hard to, it's just who you are. I guess we have to accept it. Yes. Well, Lee Chantel, maybe, but I'm not. <laughs> yes. No, is the short answer. My husband was actually vegan far before I was. He's not raw. We eat very differently, but he's really has been vegan since he was like 15 or something like that essentially vegan anyway vegetarian for sure but my family is is not really at all although they're very supportive and uh my friends as well one of the things i find is difficult because i do live in a small very small place where there's very few vegans around um most of my friends are not and the thing i don't like about that is sometimes i feel that they feel that I'm judging them when I see them eating and they might like, if we're out to dinner, they might apologize for what they're eating. But for me, the way I feel about it is I have to do what's right for me and you have to do what's right for you. And I, I that's the thing that I find frustrating more is that I feel like there's a lot of like weird awkwardness but but I don't I don't think about it, but I feel like they think about it more than I do. Do you know what I mean? Can you relate to that? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that, that it's good to sort of be out there exactly like that word outreach and that you're just, you don't have to make it a huge deal, but sometimes the, if I'll order something or get a modification on the menu, people, my friends will be like, oh, that looks really good. Or, you know, and I, I love sharing desserts at potlucks and things. I like to bring things that are incidentally vegan or incidentally, it's like, they taste really good. And oh, by the way, it's raw vegan. So I think that's a good introduction to it as opposed to bringing like broccoli soup in a blender. Like a lot of people don't want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, there is a tiny vegan scene. Like we're a quite a small island and I live about an hour away from the main city. So I'm a little bit removed, but I'm so lucky because I have like you a, a really great online network. Of, so I don't feel too isolated, but the scene, there's no, there's a one Chinese vegetarian restaurant, but really going out to eat on my island, there's amazing restaurants, but for raw vegan, I, you're kind of like getting the green salad with the cucumbers. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the people here are amazing. And I, I do love living here for so many reasons. Um, but the vegan scene, not so much. <laughs> yes. Well, I was just listening to one of your recent podcasts with the, I forget his name, the black metal, the vegan, you know, that guy. <laughs> Yeah, and you guys were talking about all the different places, and I was just so jealous. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm jealous. I'll we'll have to come for a visit. <laughs> I have been approached about that quite a bit. And I want, again, my specialty is sort of simple, satisfying recipes because my big secret is like, I don't really like to cook. So the idea of like opening up a raw restaurant or something is not my idea of a good time. I'd rather someone else open it and then I could be like their best customer. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the main things that I do online, I've kind of amalgamated them into really, I just have some recipe apps for your phone and uh, a members only area that I call the Rotarian's kitchen with air quotes, apparently. And uh, so that I have like, I've just bundled everything that I've ever done in there. So there's lots of eBooks and lots of like my YouTube channel looks kind of dead from the public, but I have like almost 40 videos for like members only love kitchen tutorials and there's a really great community in there where we do monthly challenges and stuff so yeah so that is really fun and for me too I really like like you said about opening a restaurant it's not really my thing but I absolutely love bringing people together and I love technology so for me it's really fun I, and my husband helps me a lot he's a great programmer so we do a lot of like collaborative fun things online so that's kind of my happy little place on the internet yeah mm -hmm. um probably like five I think so yeah and then I uh I know you've got a couple of of print books yourself and I did just put one together recently as well and that was an interesting experience and learning about like oh my gosh, it costs a lot of money to ship these books. It's like, it's very different. And, um, but it's funny because I have my own little cookbook in my kitchen now, but I still just tend to use my iPad. Like, I, I don't know, <laughs> but that's something I'm still trying to learn is more about like print books. And I know there's definitely a demand for them. Like a lot of people will ask me for them, but I don't know. How do you, how... I just had, no, I, um, they're basically full color and I just ordered like a big batch and then I shipped them all myself, but I don't recommend that. <laughs> mm. 
Mhm. 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 Mm mhm. Mm cool. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that's exactly a good idea. And it helps too, because for me in Canada, most of the people that I sent my book to were in the US and that was like international stripping and all that kind of thing. So I think that's a really good solution. I know it's working well for you. So. Exactly. <laughs> mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and I like the control. I like everything to be done my way. <laughs> Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm <laughs> <laughs> Probably at least the same, that's for sure. So it's a very, very common question, of course. <laughs> yeah. So yes, plant-based proteins do exist. And I know you probably have a good canned answer for that too. But yeah, but it's funny how people, like my dad is a very meat and potatoes kind of person. And he's so worried about me. And I keep trying to like explain it, but it's sort of like, he's very smart, but it's like, he doesn't, I, I love you, dad. <laughs> I'm not trying to call you out. But like, you know, sometimes people have a hard time like processing, even though if we sort of explain it, it doesn't sink in. Every time he's like, are you sure you don't need some steak? I'm like, yes, dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I do. <laughs> and 
And it could be that whole just daughters, like, you know, when you're like parents, it's hard for them to sometimes hear authoritative stuff from their kids. But I do, I'm not particularly interested in nutrition, but I do feel like it's really important. Um, maybe we could talk, I know we're running short on time here, but like about B12 and like, cause I think a lot of people, like for me, I feel like it's an important thing for vegans to, I'm not big on sub on uh, supplements, but I think everybody needs to take their B12. Do you agree about this? What do you, what are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. 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 But yeah, but generally, though, I don't know, I feel like it's very important to be in tune with what's going on with your body and to listen. And even as I evolved too, having been militant raw vegan since 2009 and just like occasionally I do have some cooked quinoa because I feel like I want it. Or if someone has made, you know, I'm at their house and they're like, I made this for you. And I'm like, I can handle a little bit of cooked. Like for me, I don't, like for me, I have my little box that works for me, like like honey or cooked quinoa. There's a few things in my box that might not be considered raw, but they work for me. And I think it's very common for people to, and I, I had to start out very like rigid because I just need, I needed those rules. And now I can kind of expand a little bit. It can be considered raw. It's just not vegan. So if you get like unpasteurized honey, it is considered raw, but not vegan because it's from animals. Mhm. Yeah, and a lot of people will use maple syrup as well, which isn't really raw, but they will use it. And also just dates. I use a lot of dates as sweeteners in my recipes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, the most popular page on my site is I have very good recipe index. So if you just go to thebrotarian.com and click on recipes, there's a really good list there of categories and things like that. And the brown recipe is on there. It's a great one to start with if you have a food processor. And yes, and of course, I have an e-newsletter people can sign up for and get the 11 best recipes ebook for free. And that's kind of it. So yeah. I do. Well, it varies. I'm not as, as good as you for schedule, but I do try to be, it's called the raw food podcast. And I do try to release one about every month. So I'm at about 30 episodes or something like that, but you are so amazingly prolific. What is your secret? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That is so smart. But still, even though you're still very prolific, because you have like two over 200 videos or something. It's amazing. <laughs> yes I think it's so true that consistency is so important and that's something that I'm trying to be better at so you're inspiring me <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was such an honor to be with you. Another double hyphenated name. And uh, yeah, I'm just really honored to be on the show. So thank you so much.